What's up guys? Today we're going to go behind the scenes during my very first ever um, Mendy ceremony party. I'm probably butchering saying that, but um, anyways, this was my very first time into the Indian wedding scene and it was a lot of fun and you know, I didn't really have like a laid out game plan for the day. Um, I really just won it and it was a lot of fun capturing the moments as they happen naturally while being as unobtrusive as possible. And that's my goal at every event, every wedding is to be there to capture the moments and to just capture the day as it happens. So, here we go. I'm super excited to share this with you guys and thanks for watching. Let's get started. Welcome to the top of my camera, also known as my GoPro. So starting out the day here with a couple establishing shots here, um, just right outside the building and then some details. So um, something I want to talk about in this video is, you know, like I mentioned in the intro, this was my very first time shooting a mini party. And so just like with any time there's a photo shoot um, that I've not shot before or just something I've um, not known about in the past, um, there's definitely a researching component to it. And I definitely recommend that you as well look into the type of shoot that you're going to do so that you know kind of like what the standard photos are and also just kind of what's expected of you as a photographer. And, you know, when I mentioned, you know, get an idea for what the standard photos are, I think that's important because you definitely want to deliver um, something that the clients are expecting, but you have to leave in room for your own creativity too. And, you know, knowing what the standard shots are helps you um, get an idea for the rules. And then when you know the rules, you can kind of break the rules too and take your own unique photos. So, um, yeah, here we are on top of my camera here on the GoPro. I'm just taking candids. That's really what 90% of this day was. Um, I mean, there was definitely a lot of group portraits um, later on you're going to see, but I left a lot of them out, but there were a ton to um, take during the day, which if my clients want that, I'm more than happy to give that for them. And I know how important that is um, for them and their friends and their family. So I have no problem doing that. But yeah, most of the day is going to be candid coverage, candid coverage of um, the bride getting her Mendy on and then, you know, her VIPs as well getting their Mendy on. So you're going to notice too, later on, we're going to have a little like a uh, party. And so that gets really fun and crazy. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, just again, just candid shots, of people hanging out, having fun, talking. Um, but yeah, it was just, this was a really fun event. I was so happy to have this opportunity and eventually um, shooting their wedding too. It was just a blast. So yeah, uh, I'm not going to talk too much. I'm just kind of let the footage roll here and let you guys watch. Um, but yeah, I really appreciate you checking in and uh, enjoy the footage. Here I am switching from the 55 millimeter to the 85 millimeter, um, mostly because I started out with the 50 because I figured it would be a little bit of a tighter room, but I actually had more room than I thought. Um, I personally love the images that come out of the 85. I just think they have a certain look to them that uh, you can definitely tell the difference from the 85 and the 55 or just a 50 millimeter equivalent. Um, definitely 85 has a certain look that I just love and it's honestly one of my favorite lenses It's just you know, there's definitely situations where it just won't work unfortunately um, And that's when the 55 comes in handy in those sort of medium to small spaces to still get that portrait look But here I am on the 85 getting those photos that I really enjoy um, And then again going back to the candids just a bunch of candids throughout the day Just documenting the day as it's happening just so they have these memories to look back on I'm definitely not including, or I should say, being obtrusive really throughout the day because um, it's not my day. I'm, you know, this isn't, these aren't photos like just for me. I, of course, I want to get some awesome photos that potentially portfolio worthy photos, but um, first and foremost is serving my clients and just giving them those memories that they can look back on. And so um, that's the goal with every wedding that I go to. And I definitely recommend adopting a similar mindset, um, just putting the client first and Remembering it's about them. It's not really about your photos and, you know, getting those amazing whatever magazine, if that's what you inspire to do, um, those kind of photos, but just document the day and um, give them those memories that they can look back on. So that is my word to the wise. So let's keep watching. You're gonna notice for a lot of these upcoming shots, um, I'm up close with the 35 mil. 
Um, I really enjoy the 35mm and being up close with it. I feel like it gives it a really intimate feeling, like it almost makes you feel like you're there, um, which I just love and it's such a storytelling lens too. Um, like I, I had said, I like to shoot tight whenever possible, so like 55 and 85 are kind of my go-to lenses, but at the right time, like that 35 is just perfect. And honestly, if there was only one lens I could use, it probably would be the 35 because of its versatility. Um, but yeah, I just really love those up close photos with the 35. And I definitely recommend that you remember that the tools that you're using, the lenses that you're using are tools and they each have a purpose. And honestly, the lenses have a certain look to them and a certain like feel to them. So kind of like getting used to what that means for your photography is important and um, using them at the right time. Just like a tool, you know, using the right tool at the right time produces really great quality work. And, uh, but yeah, I'm not saying all of these photos are super high quality work, but um, I was happy and so was the couple with the photos. So um, let's get back to it. Right here is when things get really interesting. The groom actually started to perform a dance. Apparently they had been rehearsing this for a couple weeks and I had no idea about it leading into it. Um, but when I got there, they mentioned there was gonna be a surprise dance. So I did get that slight heads up. Again, I didn't know what it was gonna look like. Um, all I knew was like it was gonna happen right in front of her. And so yeah, just kind of waiting for when that would happen, which is happening now. And actually thinking of looking back at it, it's a pretty cool dance. Um, they definitely put some work into it and they seem to hit it off pretty well and I had one particular shot in mind for this I really wanted to get um, You're gonna see it more later, but I really wanted to get a shot of um, Like an overhead shot with the bride watching the groom do the dance And so I'm able to kind of pull that off here and a little bonus is that she started to raise her hands And so kind of cool to get those hands in there, too and so here I'm switching to my 20 mil now to um, really get that shot, that over the shoulder shot with her in the, um, I'm envisioning having her on the side and then just looking over and seeing the groom dance. And I was able to time this just right because as I switched the lines, this is when it finished. So <laughs> right here is when the dance actually concluded and you know, kind of got the timing just right there. So a little bit of luck, a little bit of um, proper planning and preparation, but yeah, this was just a really fun time and really appreciate you guys watching and stay tuned for more behind the scenes uh, footage from real photo shoots, real events.